Hello, hello. Welcome back to part five of biochemistry. So this is where we're going to discuss nucleic acids. So this is another polymer, macromolecule. Those molecules are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. So there are two kinds of nucleic acids. We have DNA and RNA. DNA is the hereditary molecule. And RNA plays um, a huge role in gene expression. So polymers um, of nucleic acids are made up of smaller monomers, smaller units, and we call these nucleotides. So a nucleotide is, however, con uh, however, consists of three other parts. So we're going to have sugar, which is deoxyribose in DNA, and ribose in RNA, and then there will be phosphate group and also nitrogenous base. So any of the four bases, and we have adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, uh, uracil if we're talking about RNA, because there's no thymine in there. So now we're going back to counting the actual numbers of the carbon or the, the carbon numbers in the sugar molecule. So if we look at the deoxyribose, notice this one is the oxygen end. So we go clockwise, so this is gonna be carbon number one. However, this time we are going to use the words prime. Just referring to the location. So this would be one prime, this is two prime, three prime, four, and number five. So the importance of the carbon number is to locate where exactly we're going to be able to um, carry out dehydration synthesis to link up those monomers and also we want to see where the base is located so you can see at one prime end you will have the base um, three prime end will have a very important functional group and uh, which is hydroxyl group and then five prime end will have a phosphate group so these three main components make up a nucleotide so Let's talk about some of the differences between DNA and RNA. So DNA is going to be double-stranded. RNA in the protein expression and protein synthesis will be single-stranded. However, there are exceptions because we do have RNA that's double-stranded. The difference in the sugar also exists. So in deoxyribose, notice we have only an H at the two, two prime end of the sugar molecule. And there is a hydroxyl group in the ribose. So this is why we call uh, in the DNA, we say it's deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribose, that means deoxygenated. It lost the oxygen. So that oxygen is only present in the ribose. And then the bases. So DNA will have adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. RNA, thymine is replaced by uracil. Base pairing rules, A with T and C with G. So if you look at further categories of these bases, we'll see that we have what we call pyrimidines and purines. The difference between those is in the number of rings that they have. So pyrimidines will have a single ring. You can see this is nitrogenous ring for cytosine. And purines will have a double ring. So these two rings are, two rings are fused together. So now you might wonder, OK, so if we stretch out the DNA, unravel the ladder, and we actually see it literally looks like a ladder. These are the backbones and then you have the sides of the ladder that go across so these would be the bases so you can actually fit three rings to go across so that means you can pair up pyrimidine with purine so i have one ring two and then three so that fits the shape however why can't you just take cytosine and pair it up with adenine that would make three rings right well no the reason you cannot do that is because the number of hydrogen bonds that these bases offer. So thymine, notice, will offer two bonds, and so does adenine. So it means we have two hydrogen bonds between thymine and adenine, and one, two, three hydrogen bonds between cytosine and guanine. So that is how they're going to pair up. So now, how do we actually build a, a polymer? What do we do? So you already know that dehydration or condensation reaction is going to be happening. And the most important thing here is to understand that the three prime end of the sugar molecule offers the hydroxyl group. And this is where we're going to be able to add the incoming nucleotide. So I'm going to circle a nucleotide. So here's one and here's another one. And now you can see we want to join additional nucleotide into this chain. So here's the sugar molecule and the three prime end that carries the OH group. And then here comes another nucleotide and its phosphate group where you have the oxygen has hydrogen. So now when these come together, you are going to release H2O water. You see HHO and what's left behind is just oxygen that is going to bond with the 
um, carbon number three. So you can see this bond right here is going to happen. And we actually call this bond phosphodiester bond. So here's another one. We talked about glycosidic linkages, ester linkages, and now we have another one that we refer to as phosphodiester bond. So you can see here how the nucleotides are linked together through um, the phosphodiester bond. So here's one, here's another one, and here's another one. Now think about it. If you built RNA, for example, and you wanted to break down RNA, well, because you want you don't need it anymore and you want to recycle some of those nucleotides so can, you can use them again later. What set of reactions that we, will have to happen in order to do so? So to break it down, you would have to do what? Hydrolysis. So you would have to add water and therefore to cleave that phosphodiester bond. The process, the process of repli replication is basically called um, semi-conservative. And the reason so is because we start with a single copy of DNA and then the DNA is going to be separated. Um, those strands are going to be separated. So hydrogen bonds are going to be broken. So each strand will now serve as a template. So if you see right here, I had original blue strand and now I built an orange, which is that new complementary strand. So, so now that I made two molecules of DNA, each molecule is going to be half old and half new, half old and half new. So one can go into one cell and the other one can go into the other cell. So now if you take a look at the template strand right here, this dark blue strand, we see that we synthesize the complementary strand by adding the nucleotides that are complementary. So if we had a T, um, a nucleotide that contained an a, which is adenine, was brought in, and then if you had a G, C came in, and you can see if you have an A here, what are we bringing in? A nucleotide that contains a T. But here's what I want to point out. Notice that it's not a nucleotide that's coming in right now, but you can see because the nucleotide consists of sugar, phosphate, and the base, um, here we have additional two phosphates in the phosphate group tail. So it means it comes in as a nucleoside triphosphate. So this is where we talk about bonds that are extremely high energy. And what happens here, this bond between the second and third phosphate group is going to be broken and the energy released and this energy powers this DNA polymerase which is an enzyme that helps facilitate the linkage. So you can see they're going to kind of situate those nucleotides in the correct position. So what happens is when the bond is broken, those two phosphate groups, and we call them pyrophosphates, are going to be um, cleaved away and then we can recycle them again. So because you want to build more nucleotides later. But then this phosphate group is going to become a part of the permanent obviously a permanent DNA molecule. So you can see now here's the phosphate that's sitting in here. All right, so this is just a basic model of how DNA replication happens. There's so much more that I can tell you about it, but we will get to that unit eventually, and I will. And now you wonder, why would DNA be ever copied? Like, do you want to just have an extra copy of it? And the answer is no. It is copied only before cell division, and we have different types of cell divisions, mitosis, binary fission, that's bacteria, or for bacteria, and then meiosis, production of gametes. So you can see this would be binary fission, that would be mitosis, and these are plant cells that are dividing, and this would be an animal cell that's dividing, and all these um, gnarly looking little strings are your DNA chromosomes that are that have been replicated and now being separated into two daughter cells. Okay, now when would we actually utilize RNA? So RNA is made when you want to express a gene. So you use DNA, um, and you're going to identify a specific gene you want to express, and then enzymes are going to copy that gene in the form of mRNA. So mRNA is the one that's going to leave the nucleus through the nuclear pores and is going to lay down between the ribosomes that are in the cytoplasm. And you can see ribosomes are going to help assemble a protein. So that means individual amino acids are going to be linked together into a polypeptide, which is going to fold eventually and get that 3D shape so that you can have the functioning protein. So the process that I just described is transcription and translation. So transcription, you make mRNA. Translation, you make a protein. So and uh, this biological flow of information, transcription and translation, applies to all the living things. All the living things so and doesn't matter what you are and um, we also call this gene expression okay uh, again we're gonna get to the gene expression later in the semester I can't wait to tell you more about it